Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is sharing something really small that the EYP and the EYP started to do at this year was from Dan. So, uh, and then we would request that to take it forward and guide us in terms of how can we differently uh, introduce this Shramdan or Gandhi Jaini to our kids. Uh, it was a personal reflection for us that we do it every year and we do a lot of cleaning and we do some really, really big activities. But uh, we were not really sure that if we asked the kids why do we even do Shramdan or what does the word Shramdan stand for or how can you do Shramdan in your life or how does it start with you as a person and then it starts going outside to cleaning and doing the later work. Uh, we were not really sure how many of the kids would be able to answer us or how many of us as educators really knew what it means. So we had a small session where we broke the word uh, Shramdan and then we realized it means voluntary work or voluntary labor. And then we were not really sure if the teachers are choosing the activities if the teachers are deciding these activities, are we really allowing the kids to voluntarily do it? And if it's not voluntary, is it really strong done? Uh, and then we just uh, reflected on it and created mind maps and told the children to go back to the classroom, uh, create the mind maps, have group discussions, and then discuss with the kids that after realizing everything, what is that one thing that they feel like doing? And so every class would come up with different tasks and activities. Then we would pretty much say that we are 70-80% doing better this year. And then of course we wanted service guidance for all of us to this year take this Shraddhan celebration a step ahead and do it more in depth than just uh, doing a lot of activities. Hi, good morning. The second day is uh, Gandhi's birthday. Because it's being a Sunday, we're going in and celebrating it tomorrow. We continue to do that on second also. Tomorrow is for the benefit of the children. So they get a certain habit of understanding famous people of the world, including our own country. But they are huge, giant characters, like an open book. You know the books contain the giant characteristics of the mind of those people. So when you read them, when you read the great masters, and you take on one point, even if it is just one point, and just live. <clears throat> In order to give away the values to the children, you as a teacher, as we always do in our school, through activities and through stories, to make them reflective thinking, to do collaborative conversations, talking, make them think, make them talk about it. When they do it with their own mind, automatically it becomes strong and permanent. Otherwise, like our days, whatever we had studied, we don't remember them. Do you remember what did you do with Clive and Hastings and Queen Elizabeth and Victoria? That's all we had to study, no? Or Charles Law and Boyce Law. Unless you're dealing with it, that subject, you don't remember. So think about some stories. Have you noticed Jesus Christ is to tell through fable? Paramahamsa Ramakrishna is to talk through stories. The stories stay in the children's heart. Dig up some stories today so that tomorrow. You can tell them, find some of your own. I will share a few of them which I always remember. You know when Mahatma Gandhi came away from South Africa, he had his meeting at Mumbai with the Congress, one of his pioneer meeting. And he was staying in a little place and a somebody called Kanti Bhai from Maharashtra went down to help him. 
Now, Gandhi's time is packed with activity, no? So one day Gandhi and I found, in his little desk, Gandhi is amongst all his papers, is searching, searching something, and he was looking a little distraught. So Gandhi Bhai came and said, what are you searching for? He said, my little pencil, I had a pencil like this. So Gandhi Bhai said, why are you wasting your time? Here, I'll give you a pencil. So he took out one big new pencil. He says, no, you don't understand. That pencil is very precious to me. Gandhi Bhai said, listen sir, why are you wasting time on such a small pencil? You've worked with it, later on we will find it when we have the time. Gandhi said, no, that pencil is very precious. So Gandhi Bhai didn't argue anymore. So he said, I will join him in the search. As he was searching, he said, why is it so precious? He said, you know, in Madras, in my last meeting, they had a meeting in Madras, in St. Congress, and Nani was one of his followers. His son gave me his very precious pencil with so much of love, and I have been using that pencil, and it has become from so much to this much now. How can I throw with that pencil? I cannot concentrate because I have insulted that boy's gift. Gandhi Bhai didn't discuss anymore. And eventually they found that pencil. And Gandhi was so peaceful. He said, I found it. And today, in the day I'm going to use it. And after that I'm going to keep it in my pocket. Now this shows that how he valued people, interaction. You and I generally value when a birthday, when you get a gift, the first thing you remember, you give that person a gift worth that much, how much is this one worth? And you will try to look at the back to see the price tag there. And most probably they have scratched it. You try to re-scratch it to see if you can read it. And if you can't, in your own way, sometime in the shop you will find out how much it will cost. So what do you do? You value it in terms of money. Notice what Gandhi did. He valued it in terms of the sincerity of a little boy. And mind you, he was that time leading the Indian Congress and came from South Africa. He was running a school in South Africa in his spare time in a place called Phoenix. He had his own ideas about schooling. He learned it in his school days. He used to be a very shy boy when he was a young boy. Other boys believe used to make fun of him. He was small, frail, not muscular, not very athletic. Very shy, but very sincere and very firm with his ideas. I want you all to Pick up these stories and talk to the children. They will learn their characters, values. Honestly, I remember these. Every time it related topics and when you use them, you will find as you're talking about a related topic, these stories will come, spring onto your mind and then you can use them. Gandhi, in his principles of school running, in Phoenix in South Africa, he used to encourage the weak boy and the smallest good thing they did, he used to do that. Very nice. And those who were really good boys, brilliant boys, who did very good and perfect result, he used to make them work harder and be not so appreciative, but only that much appreciative so that they get kindled to work. But he used to tell them, this is not your end. Don't be complacent with it. 
you can do much bigger. You are here now, don't look at those kids who are down there. Then you will become compass and you go off to sleep. You look at the boys who are up there, you be like them and go beyond them. So, one day, you know, these boys used to get surprised. Why he praises that boy who doesn't know how to spell and doesn't know how to write properly? And we are doing good, doesn't appreciate us. So one of the teachers asked him, he said, see, if you appreciate that boy who is good, all he is going to do is going to sleep and become fat. He is not going to work anymore. But the person who works, who sincerely holds on to the God-gifted talent and makes it better and sharper and sharper, will be the people who will win in life. So encourage them to work harder. Those who are very weak and timid, if you try to criticize them, condemn them, make them work harder, all you will make is a donkey out of them. And they will give up. They know as it is, I can't do it, others can do it, because these boys know it, that I'm not as good as so and so. So Ram and Sham is better than me, but I am not that good, he knows it. So why do you want to do that? When he was young, in his own school, you know, in our days, inspector used to come to the school and would check out the school class by class. And he would give some paper, which used to be related to the circle curriculum which is being followed. So one inspector came and he was checking out English. Did he give five words orally and he told everybody to write it down in their slate in the slate to be writing. Gandhi knew four out of those words. The fifth word, he didn't know the spelling. And that word was kettle. He couldn't write it. The teacher was watching, no? because it reflects on the teacher. Those days, if the child didn't know, teacher was blamed by the principal and the board inspector. The teacher was standing behind the inspector. So teacher could see that Gandhi can't write the fifth word. So he signaled at Gandhi telling him, look at the other boy and copy it. Gandhi didn't copy. He put his eyes down. He didn't look at the teacher anymore. Teacher was passing by with his feet, touched his foot like that, meaning wake up. <laughs> he didn't. Inspector left. Teacher said, can't you do one thing when I was trying to tell you, correct? Everybody laughed at Gandhi. Gandhi was very sad. He went back home. He didn't tell anybody. But he was thinking, he said, I know I was right. I'm very sad. Why isn't my teacher right? Teacher was telling me to do something which is not right. That was the power of his conviction. As being a simple young boy. He used to be very frail, very timid. Very scared of darkness. <laughs> there are houses those days for only kerosene lamp or a lantern. And it was all filled with darkness. And they used to hear the stories of ghosts and rakshasas and demons. And he used to think that every dark corner there must be a ghost hiding. If I go, he's going to spring out there and catch me and eat me up. I remember in our youth, we used to be also told like that. So one day he had to go from one room to the other. It was pitch dark. And those lanterns, if you carry, the lantern's light lights up your face, shows very little light in front. The darkness looms even darker. 
his he had to as he stepped out of his door his feet was laden with heavy fear like lead and he was shivering and he was looking frantically for the corners is there something ready to plant so he can run suddenly his maid servant he used to call her tai she came and said what is bothering you my son he said i am scared of ghosts she said ghosts who are scared of darkness and ghosts anyway i'll give you a trick do you want it he said yes he said any time is coming to your mind or a rasa just say think of lord rama say hey ram i just watch all the ghosts and rakshas that will run away you remember the story of how ravana was killed by rama the rama will kill everybody from that day gandhi always do ram naam jap have you heard his song on rama ram 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 that was his song no? when he was shot dead last word he uttered was hey ram this is the power the conviction of truth of purity simple man from where a poor man the village and from there he went down to united kingdom to do his law from there he went on to south africa to teach you heard the other day when the demonstration when they were talking about he was kicked out being an indian from a first class compartment and he fought silently till he got the right to reenter that is the power of conviction of truth of purity of having faith in your own self gandhi in his village heard there was no rain for about 2 years in that entire village and naturally the earth was cracking up there was no food lack of crop so the whole village decided let's go and do one yagna into the field so there was a huge ground which had dried up totally everybody congregated there and they said if we do the yagna right today itself it will rain this was the promise of the pandits and the purohits so they all went going to the field there was a little boy who was carrying an umbrella everybody was laughing at him boy you're carrying an umbrella in the morning time sun is not hot So this boy said, "Aren't we going to pray for rain?" They said, "Yeah." He said, "Isn't it going to rain?" They said, "Yeah." He said, "So I'm carrying the umbrella to protect me from rain." And it is said that that day it did rain. And they said it was because of one child who believed in God, who believed that if I pray, it will happen. And this is this year now. on the principles of vedanta kapil vidabi we are trying to tell our children have three simple things in your heart number one don't tell lies stick to the truth yesterday two very learned monk from ramakrishna order came down from sardamat to visit our school one of them is a principal of the ramakrishna and sardamat school in indore and the other one is an international speaker she travels around the world she is invited by various countries america iceland england and speaks excellent speaker the one we were walking she said i went to a website and how do you invite vedanta without me i said Uh, I call her. Her name is Sachit Prana. I call her 
Kamalini, that was her first name. And she knows it's right from childhood. I saw something, a genuine question. How do you combine Vedanta with Adi? I said, it's not complicated. If we understand Vedanta, it's so simple. Only thing we have to stick to it. She said, give me some example. I said, we do often sessions. Everyday teachers are doing it. I asked them, why do you join school? And they say, to learn. I said, very nice. Why do you want to learn? They said, we can learn more. And we can have more studies. I said, okay. Why do you want to do that? So they said, so we can go to the higher studies, colleges, university. I said, where do you want to do that? So we will get degree. I said, okay, what will you do with a degree? So, so that we can do business, doctor, engineer, lawyer, computer specialist. I said, okay, where do you want to do that? He said, so to get a job, no? I said, okay, that means you need a job for what? He said, to earn money. I said, okay. That means you join the school to earn money, right? So they said like that. I said, okay. How much money? More than mommy and daddy. They're very clear. Almost everybody tells me this. I tell them, that needs a little correction. You haven't joined the school to learn money. Schooling is not for earning money. It is to become a good human being. Hold on to those truths. If you speak truth, that Vedanti, Sattame Vajayate, with our Indians, you know, in our national emblem, truth shall always win. Buddha has said it, our Vedanta talks about it. So if you speak truth, you just watch. Every thought comes to your mind. It will come true. I was telling Didi. She was smiling. She said, this is very nice. How do you show it to them? I said, very simple. I tell them, you come to my office to take candies, right? You have one chocolate. But one day you say, sir, I want Swiss chocolate today. I tell them, but I don't have Swiss chocolate. I got only this candy. But have you been telling truth? He said, yes sir, last five, six days I don't tell lies. I said, very good, you hold on to that and just watch. God will give it to you through somebody. I don't have it, but he'll give it to you. When you're thinking about you being a good girl, good boy, gone away smilingly, but thinking about the chocolate, Cadbury, uh, Swiss chocolate. And now you go home and as mommy opens the door and mommy says, surprise, she gives you a Swiss chocolate. He said, Mommy, how did Dr. Ghosh call you? She says, no, I was cleaning the fridge. I kept it for Sunday. Today I felt like giving you. I asked the children, I was telling Kamaldivi, who told mother? They say God told mother. I said, this belief in them is the initial, the planting of the seed. Now you are eating a chocolate with mommy and watching a TV program before you start your play or work, homework or whatever. And you see in the TV nice big pizza. And you look at the pizza and you say, mommy, mommy, let's have pizza for dinner. Mommy said, today's dinner is already done. One of these days we'll do it. You're a good girl, good boy. It's okay. And little later comes daddy. You go running, hug I had and give him a hug and daddy says, surprise and give you a pizza. I asked him, who told you daddy? Mommy, you called? Daddy, mom said, no, I just feel like buying it. I said, this is how you are rewarded if you hold on to the truth. Second, have faith in God. No God is there. Call him by any name you like. He is there. Mahalma said a beautiful word. He said, God is closer to you than your jugular vein. It's supposed to be life-giving, blood-giving vein. Closer to you than that. Ha! 
have faith in God that He's there, He's listening to you. And number three is have faith in your own self. Aham Brahmasmi in the Vedantic law. I am the Brahma. Vedanta goes ahead and which is translated into Puranic is Shivoham Shivoham Shiva Swarupam. I said, why can't the children know this? That I have the power. All I have to do is express the divinity from within. So she was so thrilled, very happy. She said, I want to show you something. To show that me, she showed from her little bag. She took out one muffler, a small piece of wooden muffler. She said, do you know this muffler? It was orange color. She said, you know who knitted? I said, no. She said, your mother. She knows this for many decades. She said, you know, when I went to Rao Killer, there your mother was there. I went to meet her. She had invited, we used to call the lady the monks of Ramakrishna order and Sakuma quite often and have meal with them. He said that day she presented me. Notice I carry it till today. I was remembering Gandhi's story of remembering that pencil. I took the photograph. I said I must send it to my family members. The mothers that little work, she must have done it with a lot of faith and dedication. This lady, she is one of the chief of monk of international order, remembers it today. So hold on to these stories, give it to the kids. Today is also Mahalaya, the beginning of Navaratra. It's a very powerful day. Go out at night before you go to sleep. Listen carefully. Make a wish. Thinking about God, Mother, the way you like, whatever name you would like to, make a wish and just watch how it will come true. It will come true. Keep smiling. Thank you very much. Love you.